Alrighty, Hosses, welcome back. And in this video, I want to talk to you about processes in Linux. So first of all, WTF is a process. A process is essentially just any program that's running on your computer. Now, the easiest way to just view these is if you type PS, this is going to give you a list of processes. So these are the ones that are associated with your terminal session. So bash, of course, we know what that is. And PS, this is the <laughs> this is actually the process that we just typed in. The process to list processes, kind of like processception. Ooh, too spooky for me. All right. Now, of course, there are a bunch of other processes that are running in the background, system processes. If you really want to see them, then if you type PS, AX, then this is going to give you a huge list of processes, not only the ones that you own, but all the stuff that's going on in the background. Again, 99% of these, we really don't care about. The system processes are just to make sure that Linux is running smoothly and you know all the crap that goes on in the background of your computer. What we really care about are the processes that we own. Pretty much the programs that we started and control manually. So before we go any further, let's just go ahead and figure out what the heck all this stuff is. So each process, as you can figure out, is just listed on a new line. Now, the first column right here, this PID, this is just the process ID. So anytime you start a new process, it essentially just assigns it a unique ID number. And this is just so you can reference the process. It's just easier than you know referring to it by name or any other you know method. This TTY, this is the terminal where the process is running from. So most processes that you start, they're associated with the terminal. The system processes that run in the background, they aren't. But just remember, we're going to see more about this later on, but this is the terminal that it's associated with. This time right here, this isn't like regular, you know, like what time did it start? Like 930? No. This is the amount of CPU time that this process took up. So if you have a really, you know, uh, time consuming process or heavy process that, you know, takes a lot of resources, this is going to be higher. The reason that these are zero is because little programs like this, like just printing text out on the screen, they pretty much are really easy for your computer to do. So those are just zero. And that means that, oh, this was really easy to run. And CMD, this is just the command, in other words, the basic name of the program. So PS, bash, whatever, human readable name. So there you go, that's your real quick overview of processes. So why do we care about this? I mean, okay, processes are programs that run on your computer, they have an ID number. Wow, so fascinating, who really cares? Waste of a tutorial. Well, not quite. The reason that I'm teaching this is because not every program on your computer runs the same way. Sometimes you want to have processes that run in the background. Sometimes you want to have processes that you control manually from the terminal, so on and so forth. So you know how I say, you know, command like PS and LS and all these little tools I've been teaching you, these are actually programs. So even though, you know, we have a real simple command like LS, this is actually a program or a process. So even though all it does is list the contents of a directory, remember, this is just like a mini program, just like anything else. So just remember that. So most of the time, whenever you run these little commands, you do not get shell back or you do not have control of your terminal until that program is done running. Now, a lot of these simple commands, they run in like half a second or like a millisecond. So we really can't tell it looks instant. But let's say that we are running a program like this x logo now this program all it does let me see if i can move this it just pops up a little image on the screen but take a note of this so if we look back in our terminal we actually can't type any new commands see we usually have this thing and we can type stuff right after it but since this x logo is still running we don't have control of our terminal yet so watch what happens whenever I close this. Whenever I close this, this X logo program is going to end. And then we get control of our terminal back. So just remember, 
whenever you run a process from your command line, you don't get control of the terminal or you can't run any other ones until that program closes. Now, what you usually want to do whenever you have a process that's going to take a real long time, you just don't want to run it, have it like, you know, go through some database and just be sitting there the whole time. You got other stuff to do. You want to work on your computer. You pretty much want access to the terminal while that process is running in the background. So I'll show you guys this real quick. So let's pop up X logo again and my mouse tipped over embarrassing. Now here I'll move this so you guys can see. So anytime you want to end this, you can either just close it this way or from the command line, what you can do is you can hold down control and hit C on your keyboard. Now what this is going to do is it's going to send it something called an interrupt signal. It's pretty much a nice way of saying, Hey program, can you stop running? So again, that's control and C and that is going to go ahead and interrupt or stop your program from the command line. So let's say that we wanted to do something like this. We actually wanted to run this program and we wanted to keep it running, but we also wanted to have control of this terminal because, you know, maybe we were working on something else. So anytime you want to have a program run in the background and get control back, just type the name of the program and after write ampersand. So this means, hey, run this process, but run it in the background. So go ahead and hit enter and check this out. This program's still running, but now we can do whatever we want in the terminal. We pretty much have full control still. Now take note of this. Whenever we ran it in the background, instead of just, you know, popping us to, you know, terminal control, it gave us some information. Now this information, this part right here is the process ID. So we can actually see that right here. X logo, the process ID is 2710, 2710. Now it also gave us this number right here. WTF is this number. This is actually called the job number. Now a job is essentially just a special type of program that we can actually do some kind of cool things with it and I'll show you guys right now.